Hello YouTube, I'm David with the David West Channel. Well today I want to make a video about air. And when I say air throughout this video, of course I'm talking about oxygen. But um, the biggest downfalls I see and the problems that people have with getting embers or with making fires or maintaining fires is the, the way they use the air, the way they manipulate the air. It's very important when it comes to embers I always go with a wide notch in my fireboard so that the air can get to it. But the air experiments that I'm doing this morning is going to be, I want to take and, and just simply show you how I make a quick and easy fire. And to the best of my ability, the best that I can relay to you on video, how loosely I put the tinder in there and how I add my three different uh, sizes of sticks and fuel and I just sort of want to show you how airy and uh, open that I make it in and the fire starts quickly. Then the next sort of air experiment is making char cloth. You know the big controversy about uh, do you need a hole in the lid of your char tin? Or do you not need a hole? I say you don't even need a lid on your char tin. Now, the few little experiments that I've done so far, just a little bit of the char, the char cloth will burn up before I take it out of the fire and put the lid on it. So I wanted to show you that, indeed, you don't even need a lid on your char tin to make good char cloth. And then the last experiment I want to do sort of has to do with the manipulation of air is to snuff out my hobo stove. This surface on the bottom of the pan, this carbon buildup, to my knowledge, nobody uses it. Shouldn't this be a very non-stick surface? Shouldn't this be a surface that we should utilize? Now, maybe some people have latched on to that and are, are using it. So the next thing I want to do is sort of snuff out this fire. There'll be just coals by the time I do this. I don't think it's going to snuff it out. I don't think I don't think it's going to create smoke, but I do think it's going to make this griddle very very hot. So I want to see if this is a non-stick surface, and I want to cook an egg and bologna sandwich on it. So once again, I've got uh, three goals to fulfill in this video. Let's get started. Now I know watching somebody make a fire is one of the most boring things that you can watch on a video. So I will just select certain scenes to show you and not make you sit through everything. Normally when I cut fuel wood to go into the hobo stove, I cut it four inches long. But starting the fire it needs to be more of leaner long enough to lean. So my first branches that go in on top of the fire are going to be long enough to lean. So that's what I'm going to, that's the size I'm going to do on these. All right, now we'll break down some of this. All right, now, combination of the leaves, the small twigs, the bigger twigs, and especially this very small processed red oak will be all we need to start the fire easily and let me show you.
You want to take your time about where you place all of your little twigs. Wait for the flames to start rising up and just see where you need to place them and try to place them loose and open. There's really no rush. I'm going to make, make use of all of these intense flames, so I'm going to put a handful on there this time. So everything is in there nice and loose with lots of air, a lot of space in between each one of them. And you can't hardly miss from this point. I mean, it's going to happen from this point. You want to just keep putting it in, putting it on there nice and loose. Alright, now when all that burns down, let me show you what I found out about char tins not even needing a lid. So uh, that'll be the next thing we try out. Put that double layer in there and just see what we get, up, what we end up with. Let's watch this. Let's watch this for a second. Should be getting a ton of smoke out of it here in a little bit. And I wasn't expecting this one to burn up that much. I'm not even going to try to ignite that. I'll let that one go too far, I guess. Let's see what happens here. I need to move you back. Let me move you back so I have room to strike the char cloth. All right, now the edges have ignited, but it's charring really quickly, which I think is key. All right, let's take it out and snuff it out. As deep as that char tin is, it has more time to burn up before it uses up all the oxygen in that tin. So let's go ahead and try a double. Go ahead and try a double with this more shallow can. See how it turns out. Here comes the smoke. Smoking gases. Highly flammable smoking gases. Yeah. 
I knew these flames would ignite. Would ignite it the way it was rolling out of there. I'm going to be ready on this one to go ahead and snuff it out as, as soon as I think it's completely charred. That looks about it right there. Now, this one out all the way. Alright, let's try this piece out. This can go into the background. Hey, for no lid on the char tin, that's that's a pretty good piece of char cloth right there. Let's see if it works. I see. I didn't get any of them fine hairs of th of threads to build tearing it that way. Let's tear it the other way. See if there's more of a ragged edge, and there is. Let's try that. And once again, I'm at sort of an odd angle, so forgive me if I can't one-strike it. But I'm always trying to one-strike it, even when I have to 20-strike it. And we'll one-strike. All right, let's get our tinder bundle ready to go. So, I just got a message on my screen that my battery's about to run out, so hopefully that part was on, was still videoed, because we still have this piece here we need to try out. Make a ball of leaves here and a ball of leaves here. And then just put the two together. Would be a good way to make a bird's nest for that. I got a ball of leaves here and a ball of leaves here. We'll just put them together for the bird's nest. Let's see how this one works out. Kind of smoky on the back. Smoke is not good on char cloth. Let's give it a try. Oh man, we lit up the world on on it that time. Now, can you see it? Yeah. Now, let's go ahead and turn this pot upside down. I'll turn you back up. 
And you can't see it through all that smoke. <laughs> oh, it's so hard to get it on video. Let's just see if we can cook an egg on that. Let's see if that uh, carbon buildup on the bottom of that pan is nonstick. Hold on, I'll get set back up and we'll give it a try. All right, let's see what we got. Let's go ahead and make some toast on it first. And I'll have to level it up a little bit. So it can get hot. Let's see, I guess this can, I guess that'll level it up. If it'll stay there. Now I did take a Scotch Bright pad and I did lightly clean the outside of it because there were, there were times that I would use this and set it on the table so we know there was probably a little bit of paint on there which can't be good so I did buff it out I did scrub it just a little bit but let's just see what happens So, it is snuffing the fire some, but still the fire is able to get oxygen here, but it can't draw like it normally would, so we do have some smoke. This is an experiment, we'll see. But if this is a highly nonstick surface, that's a good thing to know. Good night, it's already toasted. It's looking like it might actually be too hot to cook an egg on it. Let's go ahead and toast this side. That's a little bit leveler right there. And that's toasted. All right, let's put a piece of bologna on there. Don't really need to add butter to fry the bologna, but let's see what happens. <laughs> Heat. Let's see if it's going to be non-stick. Bologna would be a good test for that because bologna makes things stick. Really, I should have cooked the egg first to utilize the non-stick part before I put the bologna on it because bologna will make the non-stick stick a little bit let's see what happens we'll go ahead and add our cheese Some perfectly browned bologna for our sandwich. Good. That thing's doing a good job. And of course, the more you cooked on the bottom of it, I imagine the more non-stick it would be. That's good. That's cooked enough for me. Let's see what the egg will do now. You think it's going to roll down the sides, don't you? What if I crack it and put it on there slowly? It ain't going to roll down the sides. Ooh, there's all this crispies from the from the bologna. <laughs> it's sticking.
Well, mother phone cut off on me. So I had to break out my other phone. And it took some time for it to boot up. So the surface is not really all that non-stick. I wish I'd cooked the egg before I cooked the bologna. But anyways, these are just the normal problems that one deals with or I have to deal with whenever I go to make a video. So it was an experiment. I'm still not convinced that this uh, couldn't be a great cooking surface. I'll have to do some more thinking about it. But right now, I'm going to eat a little bit of breakfast, and I'm going to say farewell. Thanks for joining me on this one. We'll catch you on the next one.